Okay, so um, this is we're going to do a video review um, on this. Uh, I'm going to be doing some of the problems um, with you and for you, and then some of the problems I'm going to have you do um, yourself. Okay, so we're going to start off with um, our special right triangles. Um, the first is the 30, 60, 90. Now, um, I'm going to show you a little different way that may be a little bit easier. But if you remember, um, when I taught this lesson to you, I did it as a ratio, where our three angle measures correlated to the different sides. For instance, the 30 degree angle um, related to the short leg, and that's what SL is. And the 60 degree angle was opposite the long leg, which is LL. And then the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree angle okay and I told you there was a relationship that if you knew what the short leg was if it equaled X then the long leg was the short leg times the square root of 3 and then the hypotenuse was whatever the short leg was which the short leg is X right now times 2 well there's one more way that you can do this and it's this uh, we're going to use, uh, up here, we'll use H for the hypotenuse. We'll use L for the long leg. And we'll just use S for the short leg. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> one thing is to be able to set equations. For instance, in a 30, 60, 90, the hypotenuse is equal to whatever the short leg is times two because it takes two short legs to equal the hypotenuse. Okay, that's one equation. Another one would be to say um, that, let's say the long leg. Well, the long leg is equal to whatever the short leg is times the square root of three. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this triangle right here this number one this 30 60 90 and how do we know it's a 30 60 90 well they tell us this angle here is 30 we know that's a right angle well there's 120 degrees left there's only 60 left so we know it's a 30 60 90. well they only give us one side and it's this one right here okay that's 16 well, what part of the right triangle is that that's the hypotenuse so hypotenuse equals 16. And then they're wanting us to find uh, X and Y. Well, X is this leg, and Y is that leg. But what legs are they? Well, uh, it doesn't matter which one we do first, but well, it kind of does. Um, but let's go ahead and find the short leg first, because that's the easiest. Well, let's look at this. Let's look what we know. We know that the hypotenuse equals 16. Okay. We don't know what the short leg is, so it equals S. And then it's being multiplied by 2. Well, aren't we just solving an equation and solving for S? So how do we undo multiplying by 2? That's right. You divide by 2. And so when I divide that by 2, I find that S equals 8. And show the short leg equals 8. Or 8 equals Y, because right now the short leg is Y. Okay, for the long leg, again... We have an equation we can use. We're trying to find the long leg. The long leg right now is x. The short leg we just found is 8 times the right square root of 3. Well, there's nothing to solve. That's what the long leg is. So x, or the long leg, equals 8 square root of 3. So let's do number 2 together. Okay. Again, let's look at this 30, 60, 90 here. Let's look what they give us. The only side they give us is this one right here. That is 9. And what part is that? Well, it's, it's the long leg, isn't it? So they give us the long leg. Well, let's go through. Remember, the long leg equals the short leg times the square root of 3. Well, let's plug in what we know. We know the long leg equals 9, right? And the short leg, we don't know, is S times the square root of 3. Well, how can we find S? Well, let's solve for S. Well, what is the square root of 3 doing to S? 
That's right, it's multiplying. So how do we undo multiplying? We divide by the square root of 3. Okay, and when you redid uh, radicals, can you have a square root in the denominator? No. So I'm going to take what I have right here. I'm going to bring it over here. So I have 9 over the square root of 3. And the way that we undo a square root in the denominator is we take and multiply it by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. And we multiply straight across. We end up with 9 times the square root of 3 over. Well, when we multiply the square root of 3 and the square root of 3, don't we just get 3? Now, if you covered up the square root of 3 with your finger, wouldn't you just have 9 over 3? Well, what is 9 divided by 3? It's 3. And so S equals 3 times the square root of 3. And so in number 2, the short leg, which is X, it equals 3 times the square root of 3. We already know what the long leg is. It's 9. And then we have one last thing to find, and that's the hypotenuse. Well, isn't the hypotenuse, remember, the equation, the hypotenuse is equal to whatever the short leg is times 2. Well, we just found the short leg. The short leg is this 3 times the square root of 3. So we have 3 times the square root of 3 times 2. Well, when we multiply those two things together, don't we just multiply 3 times 2, which is 6. And so we have 6 times the square root of 3. So what I want you to do now is I want you to do number 3 on your own. Okay, you know, put down what the hypotenuse is, put down what the long leg is, and put down what the short leg is. Um, and you will turn these in. You'll be, I will grade these myself. The ones that I have you do, I will grade this, the substitute will turn them into me, and I will uh, have these myself and grade these myself. So let's move on. All right, and here's the other type of special right triangle. A 45, 45, 90. Now remember, since I have two congruent angles, what does that mean I have with the legs? That's right. Both the legs are congruent. Now, when I taught you guys this, I taught that there was a relationship between the angles and the sides. That my two congruent legs, having problems writing tonight, my two congruent legs were in relationship or opposite the 45 degree angles and the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree angle. And if I told you that one of the legs equal x, well, what is the other leg equal? It also equals x. And then the hypotenuse is whatever the leg is times the square root of 2. Now that's the way I had taught it. But I'm going to go ahead and give you maybe an easier way. Okay. And it's this, that in a 45-45-90, the hypotenuse is equal to whatever the leg is times the square root of 2. Well, let's look at this problem right here, number 4. Okay, and number 4, they give us this 2 radical 2. Okay, well, it isn't, which one of these is my leg? Is it x? Or is it y? Which one of those is my leg? Well, y is. So that other leg is 2 square root of 2 because the legs are congruent in a 45, 45, 90. Well, now we need to find x. x is the hypotenuse. That's our hypotenuse right here. Okay. Well, so we don't know what the hypotenuse is, but we know it's equal to what the leg is. And the leg right now is 2 times the square root of 2 times square root of 2. Okay, because again, remember, the leg equals that whole thing. And then it has to be multiplied by the square root of 2. Well, when we were dealing with radicals, you can combine those two. Well, what is the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? Well, you get the 2 times the square root of 4, right? And what is the square root of 4 itself? It's 2. So when I take the square root of 2, I have 2 times 2, because this second 2 right here, that was when I evaluated the square root of 4, because remember, the square root of 4 is 2. 
And so what is 2 times 2? It's 4. So the hypotenuse, or x, equals 4. Okay. So I'm going to do one more with you. I'm going to do uh, number 5. Again, it's a 45, 45, 90. The first thing I would do is, as soon as they give me that part right there, well, isn't that one of the legs? Well, isn't y the other leg? So we know that the leg has to equal what? 5. Right? And so now we're going to find the hypotenuse, because our hypotenuse is the x. So the hypotenuse, or x, is equal to whatever the leg is, times the square root of 2. Well, we already said that the leg equals 5, so we're going to plug in 5 for L, times the square root of 2. And that is what my hypotenuse is. My hypotenuse, or my x, is 5 times the square root of 2. So... Just like before, you guys do number six yourself. And again, I will grade these ones that I'm asking you to do. All right, so moving on. Uh, seven through nine, they want us to use the Pythagorean theorem uh, and so that we can determine uh, if we have a Pythagorean triple. And what does it mean to be a Pythagorean triple? Well, it means that, you know, uh, our A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You know, so here we go, and we look up here, and then number seven, they give us two of the sides. So we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem, our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If I can make my c. And so uh, our a is five, so we have five squared plus b squared equals 13 squared. Okay. Well, 5 squared is 25 plus b squared. We still don't know what that is. And 13 squared is 169. Well, so I'm trying to find what b is. Well, right now b is being squared and having 25 added to it. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of this positive 25. So we're going to subtract 25 from both sides, just like solving an equation. And so now I'm left with b squared equals 144. Well, I'm not done yet because I don't, b isn't by itself, b is being squared. Well, how do I undo squaring a variable? You take the square root, right? And so when I take the square root, I have b equals 12. So the missing side is 12. And since it's a perfect square, yes, it is a triple. Okay. So I'm going to do number eight. Okay. Same thing. So uh, it's nice the way this is set up. You know what your C is because that is your C. That's your hypotenuse. So uh, it doesn't matter. You know, four can be A and seven can be B here. Because it doesn't matter which one I make my legs. So... I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, plug in what I know. Well, a is 4, so we're going to square it. Plus, uh, my b is 7, so I'm going to square that. And that is equal to c squared. Well, 4 squared is 16. 7 squared is 49. And it is still equal to c squared. I had 16 and 49 together, and I get 65. Okay. All right, I'm one step away. Well, how do I undo squaring C? Well, I take the square root. Okay. And I'll do the same thing on both sides. Well, the thing is, is that C squared, or when I square that, that's not a perfect square. Okay. It would be like 8 point something in a never-ending decimal. So, yes, I could find what that missing measure is, but it's not a perfect triple. So the answer here is a no, okay, because the square root of 65 isn't a perfect square. Okay, I want you guys to do number nine, and um, not you, I want to know what the missing part is. I want to know what B is, but I also want you to answer, is it a yes or it is a no? Okay. All right. Now, this is uh, this next section is not something that I covered with you guys. 
and I did it for a reason. Um, mainly, the main reason I did it is because um, we, I was trying to get you guys caught up with the other geometry classes, and to do that, I could bypass this. So I'm going to spend some time going through this. But you can see up here, there's some rules that you guys have been given, okay, that will allow you to um, find these missing parts. Okay, so what we're going to do is is we're going to find these things they want us to find. Well, they want us to find the A or the altitude. Okay, well, so we're trying to find the altitude. Well, to find the altitude, okay, we're going to take the altitude, whatever it is, which we don't know what it is, and we're going to square it. Okay, we're using that form right there. Now we're going to take H1 and H2, and just to kind of in case you want to know what H one and H2 is, is H1 is the longer hypotenuse segment and H2 is the shorter hypotenuse segment. Because in this original triangle here that I just outlined in black, BC, that whole thing, four and five, the total of that, nine, would be the hypotenuse of that large triangle. Well, one of those is the shorter segment and the other one is the shorter, or longer segment. So H1 or five, is my longer segment and four is my shorter segment so it's my h2 so what we're going to do is we're going to take our longer hypotenuse segment and multiply it to the other piece of the hypotenuse so i have a squared equals well h1 is five h2 is four and 5 times 4 is 20, so we have that. That's an ugly 20. Okay, and we're still looking for the altitude, and a, the altitude or A is still being squared, so how do we undo squaring something? That's right, we take the square root. So we have A equals the square root of 20. Well, I want your answer, if you look up here, this is write it in simplest form. Okay, so I don't want a decimal answer. I want it to be simplified. Well, the way you simplify radicals or square roots is you try to find factors, numbers that you can multiply together and get, in this case, 20. But you're look, not just looking for any factors. For instance, 2 times 10 would give you 20, but 2 and 10 aren't perfect squares. So we're looking for a number that is a perfect square other than one, because when one's your only perfect square, the radical simplified. Well, so we already said one times 20. Well, that's, we know that. Two times 10 doesn't work, but what about four times five? How about when I write the square root of four times five? Because that thing still equals 20. Four times five is 20. But isn't four, isn't the square root of four a perfect square? What is the square root of four? Well, it's two, or it's two, right? So if I take the square root of 4, I get a 2 comes out, and that 5 stays in. And so I just found that that missing part is 2 times the square root of 5. Okay. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and fill in the blanks, well, what is the h1? Well, didn't we use it as 5? So 5 would answer that question. And then the shorter hypotenuse segment is 4. My h2 is 4. Okay. So moving on to number 11, again, look at our large triangle here, okay, and so isn't this part here where they have the 6 and the 18, and aren't those, you know, the 18 is the whole hypotenuse of that side, and 6 is just a piece, well, then we're going to find that, and then they're also asking me to find the long leg of that original triangle. Okay, well, there's an equation right there. I'm circling red up here that allows you to find the longer leg if that's what we're trying to find. And there's also if we were trying to find the shorter leg, but that's not what we're trying to find here. Well, it says to find the longer leg, you're going to take the LL and square it. And then it's going to be equal to the H1, which the H1 is still the same thing as what it was a while ago. It's the longer piece. Well, the whole thing is 18. This piece is 6, so what is this piece here that I'm making this squiggly 
the line on. Well, isn't it 12? So the H1 is 12. Okay, and then that's going to be multiplied to my H1, which we just used, is 12, plus the other piece, which is 6. Right, because remember that when I take my H1 and H2, the two pieces that I have potting use, it's got to equal the whole thing, and the whole thing equals 18. So I have 12 times 18. I would multiply those two out. And when I multiply those two out, I get 216. But I have this LL squared. Well, how do I undo squaring something? I'll well, take the square root. Okay. And so my longer leg is going to be equal to the square root of 216. Well, that's not a perfect square. So I need to find some perfect square numbers. You know, and as you get to working out, one of your perfect squares would be 36 times 6. Because 36 times 6 is 216. Well, isn't the square root of 36 a perfect square number? What is the square root of 36? That's right, it's 6. And so I would be left with 6 times the square root of 6. And so my longer leg is 6 square root of 6. Our H1, our longer piece, was 12. And our H2 that we used was the smaller hypotenuse segment, which was 6. So you guys do number 12. Um, the little different here on number 12, uh, they're asking you to find... Uh, a piece of the hypotenuse, the smaller, the longer piece. So you're going to be solving for it. Okay, you'll be solving for that. So do number 12 and then uh, I'll grade it and see how you do. All right, the geometric mean. Okay, now I like this because in, in the past, uh, the way I've taught what we just did and then these problems is that we use similar triangles and, and we did proportions and all that. Well, it gets kind of taxing and stuff gets confusing. So really this is kind of a shorter method. But all you do is to find the geometric mean between two numbers is you're gonna take the two numbers that are given, in this case on number 12, they give us three and 12. And we're just to do the mean, geometric mean is gonna be X. And so it's gonna be equal to the square root of the product, I mean, we're going to multiply those two numbers. So we're going to go 3 times 12, which is the square root of 36. Well, what is the square root of 36? Well, the square root of 36 is a perfect square number, and so our geometric mean of those two numbers is 6. Okay. So I'm going to do one more with you. I'm going to do number 13. So, same thing, we're going to find the geometric mean, so we're going to let geometric mean equal x, and we're going to find it by taking the two numbers that we have and take the square root of their products. So we're going to take the square root of 4 times 14. Well, 4 times 14 is 56. Okay, so... I'll take the square root of that, well, we're going to use a perfect square. Well, um, really, this thing is already broke down for me. Isn't that right there a perfect square factor? What is the square root for? That's right, it's 2. 14 doesn't have a perfect square factor besides 1, so it's simplified. And so 2 times the square root of 14 is your geometric mean. So... You guys do number 14, and like all the other ones, I'll be grading it myself. All right, to your trig ratios, okay? Uh, it says use the sine function, so here it's telling you in these three numbers you're going to use the sine, and it has a little reminder right here that you're doing your sine theta, or remember theta represents the angle we're talking about. So the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite leg. That's what that O stands there for, is opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay. So, and it says one last thing here. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. So number 15, here's our angle measures, 20 degrees. 7 is our 
opposite leg and this X right here, this missing part, that is my hypotenuse. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. So we've got the sine of a 20 degree angle is equal to the opposite leg, which is 7, over a hypotenuse, which is X. Now, if you guys remember back in the notes, I told you that your missing part is going to be in three different positions. And any time the missing position is in the bottom of the denominator, then that means you're going to divide. So you're going to, to find X, you're actually going to take, it's going to be equal to 7 divided by the sine of 20. Okay, and when you calculate this, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. That's very important. Your calculator must be in degree mode. Make sure it is. If it isn't, get it there. Okay, that is a must. Anyway, you, when you take the sine divided by, or excuse me, 7 divided by the sine of 20, what you end up with is, in around the nearest tenth, you get that it's about 20.5. Okay? So, let's move on to number 16. Okay, and this one, here's our angle measure. X is our opposite leg, and 17 is our hypotenuse. So it's opposite leg and hypotenuse, so it's sine. So it's sine of a 59 degree angle equals the opposite leg, which is X, over the hypotenuse, which is 17. Well, notice that in this problem, the missing part is on top. Well, anytime the missing part is on top, you're just going to multiply by the denominator. So in your calculator, you go 17 sine 59, enter, and once you find, and once you round to the nearest tenth, you get 14.6. Alright, so you guys do number 17, and I will move on down the list. Alright, 18, 19, and 20 is all cosine. So again, there's uh, your reminder right here, okay, that you're going to be using cosine theta. Remember, theta is the angle, whatever angle measure is given. The A represents the adjacent leg, and the H represents the hypotenuse. Alright, so on number 18, 51 degrees, that's our angle measure. This Y, that's our hypotenuse. And that right there, that 10, that is my adjacent leg. Okay, So we're going cosine of 51 equals the adjacent leg, which is 10, over the hypotenuse, which is X. So notice where that missing part is. It's in the denominator, just like the first one that we did above. And so if you look at it, what do I tell you guys to do? Well, you're going to take the numerator 10 and divide it by the cosine eta of, if not eta, of 51, excuse me. And so you would go 10 divided by cosine 51, excuse me, I could put x when that's supposed to be a y. That's be a y, not an x. Okay, and anyway, when you do that, you find that you get 15 Nine. Okay, let's go ahead and move to number 19. Okay, so here's our angle. It's a 20 degree angle. 7, that's my adjacent leg. And my y, that's my hypotenuse. So we get the cosine of a 20 degree angle is equal to the adjacent leg 7 over the hypotenuse, which is y. Well, Again, we have the missing part in the bottom, so it's going to be a division problem. So to find it in our calculator, we're going to go the numerator of the ratio 7 divided by the cosine of 20 degrees. And so when we do that, we find that y equals 6.6. .6. Okay, you guys do number 20. And I'll grade it and look at it and see how you did. Number 21, now we're doing tangent. 
Okay. Again, tangent theta. Theta represents the angle. Uh, the ratio for tangent is the opposite leg. So I'm going to put opposite L for the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Okay. So I come over here. Um, here's my angle measure. It's 40 degrees. Okay. This is this 20. That is my opposite leg. Because remember, it's, it's opposite the angle. X is my adjacent leg because it's helping make the angle. And so since I have opposite and adjacent, I do the tangent of the angle, which is 40. And it's equal to the opposite leg, which is 20, over the adjacent leg, which is x. Well, just like above, when I'm doing sine, cosine, and tangent, if the missing part is ever in the bottom, then I'm going to divide. So to find x, I'm going to go 20, divided by a tangent 40 and in my calculator once I plug it in I end up getting and rounding to about 23.8 okay let's do number 22 okay more angle here is 25 that leg is the leg that is opposite that angle so X is my opposite leg 15, that is my adjacent leg. So since I have opposite and adjacent, I'm doing tangent. The angle measure is 25. And so my opposite leg, I have set my ratio. So the opposite leg, which is X, goes on top. And the adjacent leg, which is 15, goes on bottom. Well, this one, the missing part is on top. Well, anytime the missing part is on top, you multiply. Okay, and so what I end up with in my calculator is I would have 15, 10, 25, and when you push enter with your calculator, you get to 6.98. Well, when you round that 9, you end up with it's about 7.0. So you guys do the last one, number 23. Now at the last problems in section, I'll be grading. All right. Well, in the previous lesson, you guys learned about the inverse. What 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 did what did doing the inverse of sine, cosine, and tangent do? Well, it allowed you to find what theta was, and theta again that represents your angle. So you do the inverse of the trig ratio anytime you're trying to find the angle. And remember on your calculator, the way that you get cosine, sine, or tangent to be that negative inverse is you have to push the second key. Okay? And then once you push the second key, then you push your sine, cosine, or tangent. But when you do, when you push that second key, you'll get the negative inverse. So uh, make sure you're reading these the directions. Find the indicated angle to the nearest tenth of a degree. So we're going to be rounding to the nearest tenth. And on number 24, they want us to do it from angle A. So here's angle A. We look at that. That is 12. That is my opposite leg. And 20 is my hypotenuse. So opposite hypotenuse is sine. Okay. So theta, my angle, is going to be equal to sine, negative inverse, times the ratio, which is 12 over the hypotenuse, which is 20. And so, on your calculator, just to remind you, you would push the second key, sine. When you push the second and sine, it, you should get sine negative 1 to the negative 1 power on your screen. Then you would go 12 divided by 20. Okay. And push enter, and you will get the answer. And what you get is, excuse me, I was looking on the wrong page. You get 36.9. Well, you found an angle measure. So this is actually 36.9 degrees, and that's what theta is, or that is what the measure of angle A is. Either you can either call it theta or angle A. So number 25, again, make sure you read the directions. 
it says find the measure of angle B. So now we're switching angles. We're going to angle B. So let's look and see what we have. They tell us 12. What is 12 to angle B? That's right. It's the opposite leg. Okay. And this 13, well, that's the hypotenuse, right? And so we're trying to find what the measure of angle B is. Well, opposite and hypotenuse is sine. And so we're trying to find the angle or theta. Okay. And we're dealing with sine, so we're going to do the sine inverse. Oops, sine squared, the sine inverse of the ratio, which is the opposite leg, 12, divided by 13. Well, so once I plug that in my calculator and do the negative sine of 12 over 13, you would get, after you round, you would get 67.4 degrees. That's what angle B is. That is what theta equals, or that is what the measure of angle B equals. So you guys do number 26. Okay. And I'm going to move on. All right. So 27 through 29 is, is doing the inverse for cosine. So now cosine, remember, is adjacent leg over hypotenuse. So on number 27, they're asking us to find angle A. So here's my angle that I'm trying to find. Okay, 6 is my adjacent leg. 13.4 is my hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm trying to find theta, the angle. It is equal to the cosine, negative inverse of the ratio of cosine, which is going to be the adjacent leg 6 over 13.4. Okay, and remember this, that fraction 16 over 13.4 is the same thing as saying 6 divided by 13.4. So when I plug it in, I find that theta equals 63.4 degrees. Or that is what the measure of angle A is. Okay. So number 28. Number 28, they change angles. They want us to find angle B. Well, there's 38 over here. That is my adjacent leg. 52, that is my hypotenuse. So it's adjacent, adjacent and hypotenuse. So that's cosine. So it's theta. The angle measure is equal to the negative inverse of cosine of the ratio of the adjacent leg 38 over the hypotenuse which is 52. When I plug it into my calculator okay, I would get 43.0 is what it would round up to and so that's what the measure of angle B equals or theta. And you guys have number 29 Taking it by now, you guys know which one I'm going to assign you the last one. I'm going to do two examples, and I'm going to make you do the third. So let's move on to the bottom of the page for 30 through 32. Okay. Um, here we're doing the inverse tangent. Okay. Remember, your ratio for tangent is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Look right here. The opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Okay. So on number 27, they ask us to find the measure of angle A. So they want to know what is that what is the degree measure of that angle? Well, at 12, that is my opposite leg. Okay. 20, it is the adjacent leg because remember, the adjacent leg is the leg that helps make the angle and notice how this side touches that vertex of that angle, so that makes it adjacent. So, to find the angle, or theta, okay, we're going to go the tangent, negative inverse, of the tangent ratio, which is the opposite leg, 12, over 20. I do the negative inverse of tangent, 12 divided by 20, and I would get 31.0 degrees. That is what theta equals, or that is what the measure of 
angle A equals. Alright. Number 28. They want us to find the measure of angle B. So here's angle B right here, the second circle. Okay, so let's figure out what leg is that to that angle. Well, isn't 20 here the opposite leg? And so 12 would be the adjacent leg. Okay. So oh, we know we're opposite and adjacent, so we know we're tangent. We're trying to find the angle, or theta. So we're going to do the negative inverse of tangent with the ratio of tangent, which is the opposite leg, 20, over the adjacent leg, which is 12. So I'm going to go to the negative inverse of tangent, 20 divided by 12, and you get 59.0 degrees. That's what theta equals, or the measure of angle B. So you guys do number 29. It'll be a negative tan verse uh, again. And uh, we'll go ahead and go on to the next page. All right. Angles of elevation and depression. Okay, word problems. The biggest thing to point out is you need to realize that all these word problems that we're getting ready to do you are having a right triangle that is being formed somehow, some way. Okay? And so you are going to be using your trig to find the missing part. So the first few problems, that it's angle of elevation. So they talk about a wheelchair ramp. Well, just think about a ramp. A ramp's going to look something like that. It's going to have a, a, some slope to it. Okay? Um, but they tell us that this ramp is 4.2 meters long. Well, so it's it's 4.2 meters long so that means the ramp has that much of a length and that it's a height from the ground it has a height of 0.7 well they want to know what is the angle of elevation of the ramp well if I started at the bottom and went up the ramp isn't this angle right here the angle they're talking about? So this angle right here, this is the missing angle, or theta. Okay, so we're trying to find an angle. Well, we just did that. Anytime we had to find a missing angle, didn't we have to do a negative inverse? Yes. So, let's figure out this angle right here. And with that, if this is the height and this is the ground, isn't that my right angle? Well, so this point seven, that's a leg. Well, what leg is it to this angle here that we're trying to find, or theta? What's the opposite leg? And that would make this the adjacent leg. Okay, so opposite adjacent is tangent. So to find the angle or to find theta, we would go the tangent negative inverse of the opposite leg which is 0.7 over the adjacent leg which is 4.2 and so when we plug that in the calculator what we find is that theta or our angle ends up being 9.5 degrees okay. All right, well, I'm going to do number 31 with you. So it says you go to a park on a windy day to fly a kite. You have released 40 feet of a string. So here I stand right here on the ground. And so I let out the kite. And so here's my string. Okay. And so I'm let out 40 feet of string. So this ending point up here that's where the kite is I'm going to go ahead and put K for a kite to give you a visual I'm not going to draw one because that would be ugly okay the st string makes an angle of 36 degrees from the ground so in other words if this is the ground that angle going up the angle of elevation is 36 degrees well they want to know how high is the kite well from the ground so 
again, this is the ground down here. Well, isn't that height? I mean, that where my right angle is. So there's my right triangle. And they're wanting me to find the height. Okay. Well, so let's figure out how everything relates to this 36, 36 degree angle. Well, this missing height, it's a leg, but which leg is it to the 36 degree angle? It's the opposite leg, right? And this 40 feet, it's the hypotenuse. How do I know it's the hypotenuse? Well, it's opposite the right angle. So, I've got opposite and hypotenuse. Well, that's sine. So, we're going to do sine. And here we know the angle measure. So, sine of 36, no negative inverse, equals the opposite leg, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 40. The missing part is on top. So, we know any time it's on top, we're going to multiply by the denominator, or by 40 in this case. Okay. And so I have 40 sine 36. And when you plug that in, you find that x equals 23.5. And we have a unit of measure. They set it up here. So it's 23.5 feet. So you guys will do number 32. Again, make yourself a triangle and figure out where things go. Okay, our last set of problems. Well, now it's angle depression, but it's still, you're still going to have a right triangle that's being formed. It's just now you're having a, talking about angle that is looking down instead of where before we were at the ground making an angle going up to the kite or going up the ramp. So here it says a snorkeler uh, sees a turtle on the bottom of the ocean floor at an angle of depression of 30 degrees. So right here is the I'll make this dot right here. That's our snorkeler. Okay. And the snorkeler is looking down at the ocean floor. And when it gets to that spot on the floor, on the floor of the ocean, he sees the turtle. So I'll make that be T. And so this represents the ocean floor. And then from the floor to where I'm at swimming would be the height from the ocean bottom, which would not make a right angle. And they told me that the angle of depression is 30 degrees. Well, Here's the key. you got to make sure you put this angle in the right spot. Well, I'm snorkeling, so I'm right here where S is at, and I'm looking down to the turtle. So my angle, my 38-degree angle, needs to go right there. That is the angle of depression because I'm looking down. Okay, um, The snorkeler, or she, is 14, a foot, 14 feet above the floor. So 14 feet would go here because I'm 14 feet from the floor. And they want to know how far from the turtle I am. Well, which distance? Which distance is it the red circle or the blue circle that is representing the distance from the turtle? Well, would it be this? Wouldn't that be the distance? Because if I went the other way, I'd have to go down 14 feet and then across. Well, that's not the actual length. It's actually this length right here that I'm trying to find. So that is my x. So let's figure out what things are. Well, okay, this 14 feet, well, isn't it an adjacent leg to that angle? So this is the adjacent leg. This x, that is the hypotenuse. So I have adjacent and hypotenuse. Anytime I'm using adjacent and hypotenuse, that is cosine of the 38 degree angle which equals the adjacent leg 14 over the hypotenuse which is x well look, my missing part is on bottom so anytime the missing parts on bottom the way I'm gonna find it is I'm gonna take the numerator 14 and divide it by the cosine of 38 and so when I plug that in there I get that x equals 17.8 feet. Okay, so let's go on to number 34. So Sarah, she's watching a parade from a 20-foot balcony. Okay, 
So Sarah is up in this balcony, okay? And she's watching a parade. And so this balcony is 20 feet, this is my right angle, is she's 20 foot up in the air because they tell me the balcony is 20 foot up, okay? The angle of depression, so she looks down watching the parade, is 47 degrees. Well, I'm she's standing up here and she is looking down. So doesn't my 47 degrees, my angle is right there. They want to know what is the distance between Sarah and the parade. Well, again, it's the same thing like the snorkeler and the turtle. The parade is right here. So this distance right here is the part they want to know how long it is. So that is my X. Well, let's figure out what everything is. Well, the missing part, or X, well, that's the hypotenuse. And this 20 feet, it's a lake, but which leg is it to my angle that is given? Well, it's the adjacent leg. Well, adjacent hypotenuse. What trig ratio is adjacent and hypotenuse? That's right, cosine. So I'm going to go cosine of a 47 degree angle is equal to the adjacent leg 20 over the hypotenuse, which is x. And just like the problem before, the missing part is in the bottom. So to find x, I will go 20 divided by cosine 47. That's an ugly 4. Okay, and so I go ahead and divide that out. And when I do that, I find that x equals 29.3 feet. Make sure you guys put your units of measure. Okay. So, you guys are going to do number 35. And when you're finished uh, with all these problems that I've had you do, make sure you turn it in. Um, it is due when you turn your test in. And your test, uh, you, if it's B day, your test will be Thursday. And if it's an A day, your test will be uh, Friday. Okay. And make sure anything that uh, you need to turn in, notes, etc., you get that stuff in so that I can get grades entered over spring break. Okay. And see you soon.